I'm thinking because. Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. Um, as you know, I'm Michelle, and I have the Pay Singers on Blair and Spencer. I'm so. Did I say your name last name? Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, great. Great. Okay. Yeah. I was. I kept looking. and said, "Just don't mess up. Just don't mess up their last name." <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad you guys came on today. Um, as you guys both know, I am an esthetician, and one of the things that one of my purposes um, with being an esthetician and working in skincare is really focusing focusing on the normalization of men's skincare. This is why I invited you on today because um, I talked to so many different men, and this has been such a challenge for men, um, just sort of stepping into this genre. Um, and reason being is nowadays men are sort of really looking at what it is. Uh, to be masculine or what it's not to be masculine. And there's so many different roadblocks that keep men from being masculine or keep men from embracing their full masculinity. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, um, and there's also this ideology of what a man should be and what he should not be. And <laughs> like I said, I've talked to so many men before and, you know, one of the things I get to do in this room is sort of, you know, bring self-care, you know, to men in a different way that has never gotten it before. And I, you know, I just want to have a conversation um, coming from a couple's perspective, because some challenges that I get is not just from the men and how they see skincare, self-care, also sometimes from the women's, a women's perspective of how they think a man should be too. So I just want to, you guys to just, introduce yourselves really quickly and also just tell me uh Spencer actually because I know you both have seen me but um you came yesterday yeah you came yesterday how you how you guys feeling from yesterday anyway I feel like I'm glowing I don't know about you yeah I I did a little procedure where we bring a little bit of micro needling in the game and I just don't know if you uh how you're feeling from that today so I I should have asked that first no I feel I feel fine I I feel great I thought I was gonna be like a tomato today but (laughs) oh no it gets better and better too but that that being said since you came yesterday can you can you just kind of give me some insight Spencer, um, on just your perception of skincare, skin routine, coming to see someone like myself, and just what's your experience there? Yeah, my, I mean, my experience with skincare has, I mean, it's dated back to when I was like 13. So it's always been somewhat normal in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but to the point where there have been times where I haven't done it. You know, there have been there times where in, I was doing an OD to the point where like, I was getting like raw in the face a little bit. Or but to the point when we started dating and you were putting lotion on your face. We all, there were, there were times, there yeah. were times. Um, but no, you know, coming, coming to, coming to see you, coming to like be in that experience. Um, I look at that like a manicure, like a pedicure. It's, mm-hmm. it's something that, you know, I want to do, you know, once a month, twice a month, just to, just for upkeep, you know, in my line of work, you know, obviously sometimes I have to be on camera or, or do something, do some things in that, in that world. So why not attempt to look your best? You know, I've, I've always subscribed to that opinion. And I remember her brother uh, said at one time, he's like, you only, get, you only get one epidermis. <laughs> so I was wow. like, I love that. I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. Cause they, it's all they, true. Cause like, even though, like, even though I've, you know, I've, I've done, I've, been a part of like this whole skincare game since I was relatively young. Um, again, there were times where I just didn't do it or were, was lax with doing it. But I remember him telling me that I was like, no, you're right. Like I should attempt to look, you know, refreshed when I'm in my old age. Cause for me, I'm doing it not for like me right now, but I'm also doing it for me like 20 years from now. You know, I have like 20 years of this on me, you know? You're doing it for me 20 years from now. Right. I love how you I love how bring it in. But no, I want to touch a little bit on that. You said you've been doing it since 13 years old. Was that something handed down to you from like your pops, your uncle? Because this is where it's at. Like most men are not introduced to that. And when they are at that age, um, it's, I was introduced to that. Like the men in my family, it was all about how we carried ourselves as men. And it was about a health perspective. My father was really big about you looking good, feeling good, taking care of yourself. And yeah. so was that handed down to you by other men in your family? Or was that something you introduced yourself to? 
it was it was wasn't handed to me by my family i i come from a family of like slight brutes like mm. football coaches and and i'm not i'm not framing them in that light but skin care that whole thing wasn't wasn't a thing for them um even when i started doing it and wearing more fitted clothes or whatever they would call me like metrosexual which i didn't take to heart it was just a i was like okay you guys don't understand this but i remember my freshman year my girlfriend at the time broke up with me and one of the reasons why is because I had two pimples on my nose. That was just one of the reasons, apparently. Oh. And, and I never forgot that. I never forgot that moment because a couple months later, my best friend had a uh, reoccurring proactive uh, prescription. So he got like the three little bottles and the mask and everything. And he had just hadn't used it. So he literally gave me his extra uh, package. So, you know, mind you, I'm losing girls because I got pimples. Right. And he's giving me this uh, this like care package or whatever. So I'm like, you know, what? I'm gonna start using it. And as a you know second semester freshman in high school, I started using Proactive regularly, and pretty much kept up some form of skincare, you know, to that point. So it, it really started with you know getting done by a girl. Oh well, great. Thank you for saying that because now we can bring Blair right on in here. <laughs> so let me ask you something, Blair. Um, mm -hmm. because a lot of challenges I get from women when I'm trying to, especially a lot of my clients, I, I say, well, hey, bring your husband in and have him try a facial. And I'll see a resistance from women almost as if, oh, he won't do that. And I'm saying, well, have you asked him? And what I'm understanding is it's their resistance because they seem to think that this is less masculine. And I've run into that in so many different ways. How do you feel about Obviously, you, I mean, there's not a huge problem. You're, you're married to Spencer. You guys come in here. But what's your, just give me a little feedback on what you think that may be about or if you've experienced something like that with yourself, you know, about yourself. I feel like that sounds wild to me. And I feel like every, like, woman I've, like, I posted you the other day and all of my friends were like, oh, I need to make an appointment for my husband. So a woman feeling that way sounds really crazy to me. The only thing I can think of is it has something to do with like their experience and their upbringing maybe with their father I don't know yes. I didn't grow up around men or extremely masculine men or anything like that so I don't see why a man would not want to take care of himself um so yeah that's just really confusing to me yeah I, you know uh, here's the thing I, I know Spencer you were introduced to this um through a breakup uh, <laughs> and I'm being very sweet because it was a very cute story because I did not know that. Um, what I what I like to do is uh, what I've learned in this room is most men stay and they come when you change the conversation. And obviously, everyone you know doesn't have a partner. But how do I get men to stay in this room? Is I start to speak to them in very practical terms in terms of skin health and taking care of themselves. Now. What I would say, and I can ask you guys this, I always say how you do one thing is how you do everything. So when that per particular woman tells me, no, I don't, you know, he doesn't need to come here and he doesn't need to do that or he doesn't do that. He doesn't take care of that. And I go, how does that show up in your relationship? And I know it's kind of a bigger, broader thing, but if that man is not taking care of himself, bringing some self-care in some way connecting to himself, taking a stop, that does show up in the relationship. Now, I'm not going to play therapist and do all of that today, but do you find any, um, can you relate to that basis? Can you see how even how Spencer take, care, take personal care of himself, how that has shown up? Absolutely. I think I see him take um, amazing care of himself and I absolutely see him take amazing care of himself me of our household of our children so that correlate that correlation makes sense to me that other one I can't tell you um but yeah I think I think I can definitely see that okay great now I'm glad to I'm glad to hear that because it's um you know I, I don't compartmentalize self-care at all you know this is just one way there's so many different ways now um men are going to therapists thank god um but you know the, the most common oh you you go into a, you've been to a therapist too i've been in therapy for three every years every tuesday it's, an appointment. it's fantastic you know and i'm and that's just the thing were you doing that a long is that something new or is that something you've been uh, doing? relatively relatively new i've been doing it for about a month and a half now yeah great 
And it's easy for you to kind of transition into something like that because you already started this sort of taking care of yourself individually mm-hmm. for a long time. And this is what I, I try to say in this room. It's like what I'm doing here and even just doing a treatment is obviously I'm doing some deep diving. We're having a conversation. I give you home care that builds a partnership, but what that more or less builds is a partnership with yourself. It's an interconnectivity. You're getting up every day. You're doing actionable steps to take care of yourself. And eventually it would lead the road and open the door for other wellness and well-being services, such as mental health, such as yoga exercise, which is pretty common for men, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm, that's, I'm just glad to hear that you're, you're doing that because it kind of like, supports what we're doing what i'm what i'm what i like to do more in the industry here um let me see so my thing is meeting men where they're at there's a couple of different type of men um and it's hard (laughs) uh meeting guys where they're at you know (laughs) you know it's hard but you know the fact that they come through the door here is just it's a blessing and i just try to navigate them as best as, as, as I possibly can. Um, can you speak to, um, hold on, let me just, I'll, I'll, yeah. Can you just speak to, I don't know, having conversations with other men about something like this? Do you even talk to other guys about what you do, uh, skincare? Or have you heard some feedback? And, and what is it? what does it sound like these days? Yeah, you know, I've I've been fortunate enough to cultivate a handful of friends that, you know, live by the same rules that I have, like when it comes to skincare, when it comes to manicures, pedicures, self-care, mental health. I talk open and honestly about that, you know, even though I've only been in therapy for a month and a half, I've always been open to it and I've always sought help. And even I'm I'm very open with with B here when I'm feeling certain things and just kind of feeling pressure or or a weight of a situation on me. Like we, we talk very open and honestly about those things. So when it comes to my friendships, I personally can't have a friend if they aren't willing to open up in that way. I don't, I don't need to be around brutes. I don't need to be around, you know, the hella, you know, masculine, oh, manicures are for, for weak men, whatever. Like, I don't need that in my life because I know the, I know the positive effect on me that it has. And if, and if somebody is like willingly not trying to do it because they believe that it allows them to be less of a man in some sense, that's not a friendship that I want to have because like you said, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah. So I don't want that to seep into anything that I'm doing. I don't want my kids to hear that type of talk. Like it's, it's really finding, finding those men around the city and just those connections that I've built over the past couple of years to where you know, I talk to friends about therapy all the time. Like even when I get off therapy sessions, if something like sparks me to like hit up my, one of my good friends, I'll have a 20 minute conversation about it with him. And, you know, he's, he's able to like receive whatever I'm like the message that I'm sending, like open and honestly. So we talk about self-care, healthcare, uh, mental health, like the whole, the whole thing, because we're comfortable enough talking about it. Cause we believe that we believe that that broadens the spectrum of what it's like to be a man in 2021 and beyond. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that, man, because most men, uh, like I said, they don't even go to the doctors, you know, and it's this thing that we have um, as being invincible. And part of being a man is about being invincible. And, you know, we don't really deal with things until it gets far beyond. And it's back to that prevention thing, you know, and you start young. And I'm glad that you brought the kids in. I'm not a dad, but I am a dad figure to my two nephews. And one of the things that I've done is the same thing my grandfather, my father did with me. I use, actually, I use the skincare component to sort of introduce them because it's something that they can understand. And once again, for men who are new to this, it's something that they can understand that's tangible. Sometimes intellectually, you can understand something, but it, your emotions have to catch up to them. So doing actionable steps, skincare routine helps. So with my nephews, I got a uh, 12 year old and I got a six year old, London and Logan. And um, when I visit them, we do little men's facials. But the whole time that I'm cleaning my face, like I'll, they'll buy the sink and I'm by the sink and I'm walking them through. We're having a conversation. I said, do you know why I'm, I'm having you do this? 
You know, this is about how you take care of yourself. First of all, your skin is the largest organ of your body. First, what did your friend say? Because I'm I'm taking that. You get one after nervous. You only get one after nervous. That's fantastic because you only have that. And I said, you know, everything shows up on your skin. And so you want to take care of that first. You know what I mean? And then everything um, follows. And so I kind of incorporate that with the boys. And sometimes I give them little facials and things like that. I've noticed on your social media that the, that the kids are, uh, I see the kids going to get facials, your daughter and stuff like that. Do you have those conversations? I know your son's a, a, a little younger, but. Um, yeah, for sure. She, she is here for all the self-care. <laughs> she loves to say, um, what did she say? A spa and salon. Mommy, we're going to the spa and spa salon. And salon. So yeah. she's here for self-care. I'm definitely teaching her to take care of herself, to, you know, love her curls, love on herself, love her um, self-esteem and her personality. And all of those things are really important to, to both of us. And our, our son is, you know, he'll be two this year, but I already know that it's going to be automated once he gets to that age of like, he's going to know what it feels like to get a manicure, to get a pedicure, to like get a little face shield to, you know, he's going to just know that to where when somebody asks him, like, what is your relationship with, with this world? It's just going to be there from the, from day one. It's just going to be a part of him to where he doesn't feel like it's imposed on him or, or he feels less than by doing it by other people. So it's going to be part of I'm listening. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, I just, it's just another aspect of health. I think that, um, like I said, most of us, especially busy us, um, the health component gets kind of pushed to the side. And what I what I say here in this room, estheticians, manicures, even barbers, um, we are now. I think after post pandemic, people are starting to realize um, that we are providing like lifestyle medicine. No, we're not licensed therapist or psychologist, but we kind of have that flow. You know, most men, you know, they feel comfortable in the barbershop. You get the most honest, open conversations, you know, and so I think after pandemic and people just wanting to feel good about themselves and not knowing where to go, for me personally, I was so busy. I probably shouldn't be admitting this over pandemic, uh, over the pandemic, but I was really busy in the phone calls I was getting is like, man, I just want to feel good. Can you come through? and take care of the brows and take care of the hair, um, so take care of the face, excuse me, I don't do hair. Um, and so I think that it's just about reiterating how we um, just build a certain str- a character character with ourselves with, with health, because we so, we've gotten so far away from that. Mm-hmm. And so talk to me about being busy and and trying to fit all of this in like i know i just got a list from you guys today first of all let me just say the products are very good <laughs> very very good um we will talk a little later but um you're busy and you're your parents and you are uh business owners um how often do you guys get to do this sort of thing individually and do you do it individually is it always together Um, I honestly think that we're both really good at prioritizing self-care. He knows like if I need to go get a manicure, that's what I need to go do. It's not like, oh girl, you could do that whenever. Um, I think even when I first had um, Cairo, it was like once a week, you need to just take her. I'm going to go take a like two hour bath and like do all the things. And he never had a problem with that. Um, We do do it together as well. We do manicures together all the time. Um, I think I like what you said about doing um, facials together and like giving each other a facial. I think that's something we can try. Uh, that sounds uh, yeah, I think that's <laughs> great. I, I was going to actually bring that up. Um, yeah. I did a class. I, I explained to you. I was a class called BOMO, and it was parents and over the pandemic, and they just wanted to feel good. And I uh, taught a workshop on how to give home facials, and that's something that I think is great for you guys as a family, obviously, and Mm -hmm. uh, just reconnection with each other. It's a beautiful thing. Um, Have you you, you, like, how do we set it up? What's the tools? What do we need to pull out? 
Well, I, you know, here's the thing. You already have it, right? You have all the fabulous skincare. It's about creating an atmosphere. It's the same thing I do in this room here. You know, mm-hmm. I make sure that I made a place that men can feel comfortable in. And mm-hmm. so when you're home, you make sure that you have a place that uh, our space when you do the facials on each other, that's inviting and comfortable for the both of you. Mm-hmm. That feels uh, relaxing, romantic, whatever you want to, um, whatever you want to express. Yeah. You know, yeah. and try yeah. to do it once a month. It's it's just a nice way. It's a, it's a new way of saying date night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's a new way of saying date night and it kind of keeps you guys kind of consistent in the self-care arena. Yeah, I love it. I love it. We're going to try. I'm going to report back. Yeah, and you can do it on the children too. Like the baby, he's he's young, but there's ways. Because there's infant facials, by the way. <laughs> there Beverly, is. Beverly Hills stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but don't worry. It's it's really it's 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 infant facials. It's not like full on what you guys get in here, but it kind of um, yeah, it's more of a massage. More a massage. That's all it is. A massage. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> yeah. All right. So tell me a little bit about. Um, do you guys know the differences between uh, facials and, and skin treatments? I don't know the difference. I feel like skin treatment sounds a little bit more serious. <laughs> So what you got yesterday <laughs> was a skin treatment. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm not going to go into it because I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not like a doctor. But what I'll just say is it's something that I try to explain to men here. So how I introduce a lot of guys into facials or skin treatments or the both is I start off with the facial, which is very relaxing, which you guys first got when you got here. And then um, it's very relaxing. It's deep cleaning. It kind of builds a little trust here and introduces, you know, what your skin needs and what sort of, if there's any target things that we need to focus on, um, it sort of introduces me to that. And skin treatments um, tend to be something that is more targeted and focused. Like yesterday, I gave you something more targeted and focused. Um, I always find that that is great to introduce to guys, too, because once they have something more targeted and focused, and Spencer, maybe you can help me out with this, um, they tend to sort of be consistent. Because a lot of the kickback I get is I'll get a couple of, at the beginning, I'll get a couple of guys who come for facials, but I notice if it's something that, is not practical because of the one of the there's th- three big challenges men have. They always say, I don't have enough time. Um, obviously, um, why do I need to do this? You know, why do I need to keep this up? My skin is fine. And we talked about the prevention thing. And then the last one is the masculinity thing, which I think we went over. But do you find that you your consistency is based on you seeing results? from the things that you've been doing? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I don't, I want to speak to for all men, but I do think women are goal oriented. So if they have something at the, at the end of the road that they can aspire to get to, um, I think that will keep them coming back. Um, Again, once you, when I was sitting there yesterday and talking about, you know, when, when you were going through the skin treatment, I could feel that you were like at work. And, you know, we'll see, you know, I've already seen, uh, you know, some improvement and I can't wait to see how it, how it affects uh, in the next day or so. But um, I just, I just know that if there's a better version of my skin out there, I want to see what that looks like. Yeah. And I think if, if that's the goal, then yeah, I would make it a regular thing. Well, it's the patient. And, and I think that's, that's just the, the real main component with, I'm learning with men, we don't, I don't have enough time because there's always this, this immediate rush to the result. Mm-hmm. And I think anything in self-care, um, like I always, I, I always, if I have to talk to men about skin and how it changes and, how, and the time it changes, I always say, listen, it's like going to the gym, man. Like you're not going to get pumped up. You know, you may leave the gym that day, you pumped up, you got a swell on. Like when you leave the room, you got a glow on. It don't mean your skin has changed. It just means that it's clean. <laughs> it means that your muscles has been pumped up, but it takes skin some time. If you can just ride out this journey with me, you'll see a difference. And it also, by doing that, and if they stay consistent, it builds sort of this patience with themselves. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm sorry. It's, no, no. It's, 
interesting, it's interesting you say that too, because it, it made me think about how I, I would assume like some men think of skin as, as somewhat being on autopilot. Like it's going to take care of itself as long as I put some lotion on it or whatever, like it's fine, but you really do have to keep up with it. Cause like you said, it is the largest organ in the, in the human body. I think men, we need, I, at, at the end of the day, I think the self-care thing um, and the reason why I'm really adamant about normalizing men's skincare is that you, you said it, um, People, men think it's going to take care of themselves because they don't see no, no, on the surface visual issues. Mm-hmm. Like on the surface, we look fine. I'm fine, but inside, what's going on, right? And during, and then if if you're not taking care of yourself on the inside, down the road, you will start. It will start erupting. And I, um, I just think this is a great way to sort of introduce that process, that idea of process of self-care. This is why I'm really adamant and I really love speaking to different types of men now having the couple situation. I love, I'm so glad you guys are on today because it's nice to kind of get the the, the partnership aspect of it Um, because this is, this is what I like to do more of and I would like to see more of, of men just understanding the, the idea of process. You know, and I think because we we're, we live in such an instant gratification sort of, sort of culture that the idea of process is um, is hard. And I have to admit, you know, I have my own issues with the idea of process, um, but I have things like being in this room, working with men like yourself, people like yourself to kind of bring me back to keep me sort of accountable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's also, in what I've noticed too, um, it's also, there's a meditative element to it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I remember my first time being there and also even yesterday, there are moments within the facial I just don't remember because it was such a relaxing environment. You know, you have the weighted blanket, you have the music playing and you're getting something done the without candles the candles going, the sense of air, like you're getting something done to you where you don't have to do anything but just be there just to be present and I feel like a lot of men we're in this like this hustle grind I gotta go get a culture to where you know men feel like if they do sit down for an hour and don't do anything they're like losing out on something or they're not going and getting that bag or whatever and when you when you allow yourself to sit down and just be present and allow something and someone to work for you and to help you be better. Uh, I think that is a great, just to me, a great selling point of why this could be good for men. Because again, I don't remember maybe 15, 20 minutes of the facial because I was in such a relaxed state that I was kind of off in a different, in a different realm mentally. And I appreciate that because it just calms, it's calming. Uh, and it allows me to like go into the day just even more refreshed and, and rejuvenated. So again, thank you for that. I'm glad you walk. I'm glad you said that. And, and you brought up, a, a, and I'm glad you reminded me of one of the things I say is most men who are dads and are busy, they don't even have that. They don't get that touch. Yeah. You know, they that therapeutic touch. And people don't realize how that therapeutic touch is very important. Just that touch from someone else and, and bringing a calming. It's one of the things that makes me gratify. One of my biggest, it gratifies me doing what I do. Um, one of the biggest compliments I can get is when I hear someone start snoring because yeah. I, especially because of us being in that hustle of a bustle, there's sometimes I can feel when they're in my bed, I, I can already feel that they're not used to having to come to a full stop. So yeah. during the process of the treatment, when they can knock out, I, I, I kind of smile. I smile when I go, okay, because I know that this is the downtime for them. And to actually get that therapeutic touch, to get that nurturing on them, most men don't even think to, to know that that is needed for them. Yeah. You yeah. know, and yeah. you're right, you're right. You know, and, and you know, especially as busy dads and, you know, couples, like I, I just, it, it just gratifies me to know that that's neat, that they can understand that that's needed for them. And what happens is, after time, it does build up um, a wanting for more of it, mm-hmm. other things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, okay. it's uh, you, you hit it on the nail. Um, most men just, you know, they don't, they feel like if they do stop, if they do slow down, they're not, they're not advancing in some way, shape or form in their life. But 
at some point you gotta relax and just just be present and let something just happen to you. you know? Prioritize yourself. Prioritize yourself. Yeah. And, that, and that's it. It's about prioritizing. And you know, um, it's a journey and um I'm here for it. I'm at the beginnings of it. We're at the beginnings of it, most of us young men. And I'm hoping down the line that, you know, that this sort of work, um, these sort of conversations on a broader scale um, with other wellness health um, practitioners can be had as a way to continue to bring lifestyle medicine in for men, because I think it makes us better humans. It makes us better to our partners. It makes us better to our families. And it makes us better as businessmen and, and, you know, just in society in this world. So I, I'm here for it. And I'm so glad that you guys gave me a few minutes of your time this morning to just kind of talk with me and so that I can continue to share this with other people. So we're happy to be here. And I, I want to add that, like, as a partner, I want that self care for him as well. Like I want him to feel that I want him to take care of himself. I enjoy that. He enjoys this. So you know, we're happy to do it. We, I love you, like your um, passion for what you do comes Mm -hmm. out, like just as soon as you start talking. So we really appreciate you. And we're excited to continue that glow. I love it. And we need more women like you, Blair, pushing the middle along. I'm glad you're on because I'm glad that other women need to see you supporting your husband in this. Mm -hmm. And, 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 And so they can understand because sometimes, you know, we live in a society, it's a see, it's a, what I see, society and um so i'm glad that you're here for it and i'm glad that you guys uh gave me your time today i really really appreciate you both yes. and i'll see you in here next month yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll talk to you soon talk to you soon guys thank you so much spencer thank you so much blair yeah we'll talk <laughs> to you. All right. bye, bye.